building off of the last video, we had two questions where we had multiple equations, multiple unknowns, or are those in those cases, two equations and two unknowns. And they like these kind of problems on the SAT, but they're going to be different from the problems you're maybe used to in your algebra class where you had two equations or three equations and three unknowns or whatever it was. You had to, you know, multiply equations by different numbers and then add them, stack and add, all that kind of stuff. Occasionally you might see one that straightforward, but usually these multiple equations, multiple unknowns problems will have some kind of twist or tweak. Uh, they may at first seem impossible, but there's always going to be some little tweak, right? You want to find a 30 second solution in order to get down to that answer. So these first two problems we're going to see are going to be ones where um, you're going to do either some kind of substitution or find some other little shortcut that's going to make the math fall out easily. In the next video, we're going to see examples where we're going to do some cancellation and, and stacking them. So let's look at these two first. Number 13. This is going to be a, you know, medium, medium question. For the same, for the system of equations above, if x does not equal zero, what is the value of p? So we look at this and we say, well, let's see, I got one, two, three, four different variables and three equations. So right off the bat, you might think, uh oh, how the heck am I supposed to do this? You know, I've got three equations, four unknowns. What am I supposed to do? Well, as we're going to see, it's not going to matter that much. Let's take the information a piece at a time. So we have x is 3v, we have v is 4t, and we have x equals pt, and we want to know what p is. All right, so we look. Well, let's notice something interesting. Just like in the last couple problems, we have x equals 3v and x equals pt. So let's just go ahead and set them equal. So they like doing this. 3v is equal to pt. So we want to solve for p, so let's just do that. So we get p equals, divide by t, 3v over t. Now what we might do? Well, again, let's do a substitution. We know that v is equal to 4t, because we already used this, we already used this. Remember, you're going to use almost all your information in a problem most of the time. We know v is equal to 4t, so let's just go ahead and substitute that 4t in here. Now what good might that do? Well, let's see. Uh, p is equal to then 3 times 4t over t, and then aha, look at that. The t's are going to cancel, which is good, otherwise we definitely couldn't do this problem. And we're going to see 3 times 4 is 12. So the answer to this one is indeed 12. So notice it may look impossible, but they've had to set it up in order for you to be able to do it. So here we're doing a series of substitutions. Remember we talked about substitutions in a previous video, and here they are again, coming up in a little more difficult form for a multiple equations, multiple unknown problem. Let's look at this one from 2005, section 8, number 15. This one is a, let's see, difficult. It's a hard uh, for which of the following values of k will the system of equations have no solution? Wow, this is a tough one. So we need to know what is going on with the system of equations. Now think about how you normally figure out a system of equations. Normally you figure out a system of equations and you say, well, let's say you know, I have x plus y and x minus y equals 2 and 10, right? Well, how do you normally solve these? Well, one of the ways is to stack and add, right? We're going to look at this in the next video. But you go ahead and you add these together. x plus x is 2x. The y's cancel, we get 12, right? So x is 6, right? And then we will plug 6 in for x, and we get y is 4, however you want to figure it out, right? That's the usual way. So when will this have no solution? Well, it'll have no solution when, think about it, if we can get down to a single x or single y, we can get a solution. So we need to figure out a scenario in which when we stack an add, it doesn't work out. We don't get an x and a y. Everything just cancels out. So let's think about this. We have so far... 2x minus 5y is 8. And we have 4x plus ky equals 17. Well, let's think about this. Um, what would we have to do in order for these to pretty much completely cancel out? Well, let's think about our rules of algebra. Let's go ahead and multiply the top by 2 just for fun, right? Both sides. So we're going to get 4x minus 10y is equal to 16, and 4x minus or plus ky is equal to 17. So notice what's going on here. If I stack and add them, if I subtracted them, if I can cancel out both of these guys, we're going to have no solution. So what is k going to have to equal? Well, k, in order to match there, will have to equal negative 10, right? Because once k is negative 10, what do we get? Well, we get 4x minus 10y is equal to 16, and 4x minus 10y is equal to 17. Wait a minute, 
right? That doesn't make sense. There's no way that this can equal 16 and the same thing can equal 17. That's just against the rules of algebra, of logic, and, you know, of existence. So if this were equations, we would have no solution, an empty set, right? So what is k going to have to equal? Well, k is going to have to equal negative 10. So this one's a very strange one. I don't think you'll see anything like this again in an SAT. But what it tests is really your knowledge and your understanding of how these multiple equations, multiple unknowns work. So once we can see that, okay, if it completely canceled out, it would have no solution. Then we see that, okay, k is going to have to equal negative 10 in order to completely wipe it out. Uh, so that's a pretty tough one. But uh, I think that at least is the best way to go about doing that. So those are a couple examples of two equations and two unknowns. Let's look at some more examples in the next video.